So I thought I would start today because it's early and it's rainy, or at least, you know, spritzing out, um, by giving you all a little bit of an introduction into some of the Enochian tools. Now, let's start off about why we have the tools. Well, first of all, the simple answer is, well, the angel said, make these tools. Um, another reason to have them is that you're really integrating yourself um, symbolically. Uh, you're, you're putting your own energy system through uh through its paces and you're you're sort of aligning yourself more with the enochian current and the energies around that there's a whole um symbological energetic thing that has to do with your entire body subtle body mind the whole uni unity of that when you're getting into enochian so that's kind of, those are like the two big reasons. Now, if that's not your approach, if you prefer more of an open-handed approach, um, that's fine. Uh, just know that Enochian really probably isn't for you. Just go ahead and do those things. So we'll start off with the Sigillum Dei Amen. So this is the very first thing that I will mention, uh, and that is the ring. The ring is actually a little bit more on the expensive side. Um, if you don't have a ring, you can go ahead and uh, download, uh, copy, I have all these tools, by the way, in the, an Excel file. I worked pretty hard on that. Um, yeah, all of these except for one, which I'll mention in a second. But I have all of these tools available in an Excel spreadsheet on my website, enochian.today. It's for free. I, I, tr I really, I, I don't feel comfortable charging for this stuff uh, because I feel like it's our, it's our heritage. But anyway, uh, so this ring, why do I mention this first? Well, the angels sort of said, without this, I shall do nothing. But you can see here, um, the basics are, it's supposed to be made of gold. This is actually gold plated, and that's as gold as I, my wallet can afford. Um, but you can definitely do a paper version of this in gold, uh, with a gold background. And uh, I used a black font uh, with that in the Excel document that I have. It's just called the Enochian Implements. I forget what the um, final number is. I, I think I'm on version eight right now, just as I keep adding stuff to it. I haven't updated in a while, but um, at any rate, mainly because I think I've gotten everything that needs to be in there. So at any rate, um, the initial vision that Edward Kelly had was a thing like a P, a thing like an E, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we think, the scholars who study this more closely than I think that it was probably either Enochian or Proto-Enochian letters, and D just never went back and updated the diaries with that. So anyway, this would be the letter P, E, L, and E if this were these were transliterated into English letters. And then down here, this would be the letter V and the letter L once again. So, but basically this structure, I got this from, just had to look that up there, it's Witchcraft Prague is what, what it's called. So it's out of the Czech Republic. Uh, they did a very wonderful job, as you can see here, you know, beautiful lettering. You can even see the little tails very well in those uh, Enochian letter L's. So again, this this is the first thing I'm mentioning because it's, it's that phrase uh, in um, the prayer uh, or the delivery of this, the transmission of this, without this I shall do nothing. Oh, okay, so make sure that's the first thing you focus on. So it's pretty important. Um, so again, if it's, if, if, a you know, they're selling it right now for a little over a hundred dollars and, you know, whatever included taxes that is, but the main thing I would say is, um, that if you can't afford it, go ahead and print it off and just, you know, use a little tape. I have it as like a nice long, uh, strip of paper that you then tape. So that's off. the ring. Um, the whole deal is with it, you know, I, you know, sort of do the same prayer, you know, uh, Behold the ring, lo, this is it, et cetera, et cetera. You can get all that in um, Lan Mailu Duquette's book, Enochian Vision Magic, available at fine bookstores everywhere. So that's the ring. And um, that's always like the first thing I lead off with, you know, a lot of times I'll, you know, wake up in the morning, do a simple prayer, and there it is. I had to pause a little bit to, uh, you know, take off the sweatshirt, which is making me hot. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the um, Sigillum Dei Ameth. The rest of these, more or less, I'm going in order of how much it costs to make it. Um, the, your, your mileage may vary depending on where you live and stuff like that. But generally speaking, I'm, I'm going in order from least expensive to most expensive. Um, 
So let's get started. So believe it or not, uh, this big complicated thing here in terms of finances, this is the cheapest uh, in my view. It, it, I mean, there's a case to be made between this and some of the ensigns, which I'll get into. And of course the uh, round tablet, but in terms of like overall value, this is the most, this is the least expensive, most um, financially uh, worthwhile to invest in. So this is known as the Sigillum Dei Amif. A lot of times Enochian practitioners will just abbreviate this SDA. And it, what, do you, what does this uh, entail in terms of cost? Well, you need a pie tin, a nine inch pie tin, and you need to buy about um, two and three quarters, maybe a little bit more, maybe three, but I would just buy three pounds of wax. So this would be just under a kilo and a half of beeswax. Um, the quality will vary and you may find yourself having to melt and, you know, scrape off some uh, spongy parts if you're if you're going into this when it when it cools and you notice, oh, this part is kind of spongy, this is kind of cruddy, you know, well, you may have to scrape that off. And that's what happens when like water gets in there or stuff like that. Um, this is not really a wax product uh, making video, but um, suffice to say, get a nine inch pie tin and the thickness of this will be about, uh, will be 11 and three eighths, uh, or excuse me, 11 eighths, so one and three eighths inches. And what this will, what you'll do is you'll get those things, you'll melt it down. Uh, I melt it down at 160 degrees Fahrenheit, I think is roughly the, um, uh, is the melting point. But usually instead I just, I, I crank that up to about 220, which is just over 100 degrees Celsius. So uh, melt it down, let it cool. Then when it cools, um, you go ahead and uh, first of all, make sure it's cold. You don't want to spill wax. <laughs> Um, but then what you do is you get a template, and there are blank, uh, templates for a blank Sigillum Dei Amith, um, and it's just really nice. So what I did is I put in like push pins at all of these critical points. So I put, would put them in like right here, you know, all, all on these angles of both the heptagon and the uh, uh, heptagram, as well as this inner one. I just put in a bunch of push pins, and then you just, you know, find a straight edge, you know, ruler will be just fine and you connect the dots. I did buy some wax carving equipment to make it a little bit easier, but suffice to say that, you know, even if you were to buy that, buy the wax, and just wanted to make one of these, it really should just cost you about 50 bucks uh, American. So that's not too bad. Um, so the rest of this is just, you're literally just, you know, carving in each letter. Now that takes a while, but you know, notice I said investment in terms of money. You know, so if you're, if you're motivated, you can actually do this without too much of a problem. Um, one thing I'll just note on this is that, you know, you can, um, that I went for this version, for my own personal version, I went with Enochian letters throughout, except for this outer ring. Um, the outer ring, I did keep the English letters for kind of subtle reasons, but suffice to say, you know, when I, when I first, you know, scried with this thing, first activated it, and the vision came in, I could like feel the energy coming, kind of whooshing in from it. So I think there's something to be said to just, you know, actually to, I think the angels appreciated this effort. Um, and, you know, they, they liked it. Now, a couple of things here, I'm going to point to a couple of errors that I've seen. Um, you know, I mean, it'll, it'll probably work just fine, but Maybe not, which is why I'm pointing out the errors. So the first thing here is um, this letter right here. Uh, D went ahead, John D, and, then, and by the way, John D and Edward Kelly, that's who I'm talking about. Those are the two main guys who had to do with this. Um, the This letter right here to the left of the uh, head of the pentagram, if you think of this like a human body, um, this letter, he transcribed it as the letter Z. He had this tendency, and I noticed this when transcribing um, Liber Loga, he was very particular about the way something sounded, and he would write stuff down phonetically. But in this case, the actual, this whole thing kind of came about um, via a transmission of individual letters into like a seven by seven table, at least, at least this inner part that is. And so he, but when he was pronouncing it, he would pronounce this one. This is Zabathiel. 
And it's like, well, great, you know, that's the way it sounds, but it's like, you know, um, if I, if I'm, you know, uh, if I, if I pronounce the word receives that S at the end, it makes a Z sound, a Z sound, but you know, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't, you know, spell it with a Z at the end, unless I'm doing, you know, some kind of cool alternative spelling, nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying like, you know, why are you doing that, dude? Why are you changing the way it's spelled here when it's confusing to the rest of us? So anyway, he put in the letter Z right here instead of an S. That's what I'm trying to say. And this is the Enochian letter S. Um, so that's weird. I didn't understand that. So I went ahead and just back corrected that to the letter S. I know it doesn't look like that, but that's, that's the letter, Enochian letter S. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is this letter, it's almost right at the bottom. It's right next to where it says OG here, um, is this letter right here. And now I've seen this a lot. And this is another thing that John D didn't correct. Like the angels told him the right way to do it, but he would never go back to the original drawing. And, and well, he would do that, do that sometimes. I, I got to give him credit. He, but he did not go back to this drawing, this initial diagram and change this or put a slash through it. He had this as Y14. And it's really Y15. Now, the reasons for this are subtle, but suffice it to say that if you add up all the numbers around here and, you know, and also the based on the vision that, you know, and the, the description that um, the Archangel Michael had, you know, he, he it adds up to 440, which is not the number you want to have. You want 441. And this has to do with um, Hebrew gematria, which is a numerological um, system. All of this is to say, so those are two uh, errors. And then another one is right here, this angel. It's not of this uh, heptagon and it's not of this heptagram. It's right in between. It's sort of the, um, if you're looking at it from, from your per perspective, you know, your right, uh, this right here, where it says, I. this is letter, Enochian letter I-Z-E-D. This is, I'm sort of reading it backwards. And and when I wrote this, by the way, I did it left to right. So I'm just doing it upside down. But if I were to like, you know, say I Z E D, okay. You know, um, for whatever reason, in, in um, Lon's book, I think there was a just a transcription error that wasn't fixed. The book is excellent, but I'm just pointing it out that okay, that should be I Z E D. So all told, $50, go in, you know, buy your push pins, you can buy carving, you know, wax carving equipment, if you want melt it down, find that um, SDA template, and then Lon's book has the rest of these. But I'm just pointing out some errors that I've seen both online and that one error in, um, in Lon's book. Just a, you know, just an, uh, just got past uh, editorial. But all of that's to say, you know, um, this is, it's pretty cheap, you know, 50 bucks, it's like, okay, you know, you know, you, you, you do the 50 bucks worth of materials and then you put in an afternoon. Now, one now, thing that I haven't gotten into is the process of making these. And I don't know how else to describe this, but when you are making this stuff, um, you get a bit of a high. And why do I say this? Because you get high. It's weird. The angelic energy that you're drawing up from this, it makes you feel pretty good. Um, and you know, um, that's, that's all I can say about it. So at the very least, you know, it's, um, probably, probably cheaper than uh, a different way of trying to do that. Um, and also more stable. This is my cat. She likes to come in and say hello. Okay. So we'll move, uh, into the next thing here, which is the round tablet of Nelva Nelvage. Not even sure how to pronounce that correctly. And this is a get front coming from a guy who's done this. Now, as you can see here, the inking has uh, kind of messed this up a little bit. I haven't gone back and fixed this because the angels know the difference, right? Um, at some point, I probably will, but not right now. So at any rate, um, this is much more of like a four-inch uh, uh, pie tin. And I wasn't sure how to, thick to make it, so it's you know, about the same here as the SDA. So this is obviously going to be much faster, much less wax. So if you wanted to invest in a bunch of this, you could probably buy about seven pounds worth of wax and have all the wax you needed to make everything you need, seven to 10 pounds, something like that, you know. So you're, you're looking at, uh, you know, three to, you know, two and a half, three uh, kilograms, you know, to four, <clears throat> four and a half, something like that. So at any rate, same deal, melt it down, let it cool, pop it out. Um, oh, one other thing about this SDA that I forgot to mention, let me see if I can do this really quickly, is that you also need to do the back. And the back is also is always the fun part. 
Um, so what this is actually what the top of the wax disc looks like when it cools. And by the way, if you're having problems popping out the disc from your tin, what you can do is you can just, especially if you're in a colder climate, you can just like wait till overnight and like first thing in the morning and the wax will contract a little bit um, as it cools and as it gets that cold. So you can just, you know, flip the tin over and then pop it out like that on the other side. It will come right out. But this is the smooth surface. So this is where you want like the front of the SDA to be. Um, and then, but this, because it's a little, it gets a little uneven. You can see like little ripples here. If you look closely, assuming I can hold my phone steady. There you go. You can see the little ripples there. It's just the na nature of wax. But at any rate, um, you put in the word Agla and all of that, and Lon has it in his book. And so as far as this goes, same deal, you know, carve in the letters. And again, I did all of these in Enochian letters. So that is a the round tablet of Nalvaj. The reason I didn't lead with this, even though clearly it would be cheaper in terms of materials, is that it's good, it's important, but there's so much more going on with this. Both of these are important, but this one has a lot of the juice. Oh, hi, I didn't forget you. I'm just lying down on the floor now, but there's a good reason for this. So why am I on the floor and taking a weird video? Well, it's not to uh, do anything other than to show you the next part. So as you can see here, this is the holy table and I have these risers here. Now, why do you have furniture risers? You know, isn't the table already high enough? Well, it is, but underneath, and I'm actually gonna risk this here. And I'll try to keep this quick. So this is me trying to hold up as I slowly slide this out. Come on now. I think I'll be okay here. I think I can do two things at once if I can just hold this very steadily. So here is the other reason you have the four inch pie tin. And oh look, it's a miniature version of the SDA. I'll try to get decent, a decent look at this. So it's the exact same thing. And here, obviously, maybe it's not so obvious because it's so tiny. I used English letters, but you can see Sabathiel there. Uh, so I'm going to put this back. So that's a miniature one. So if any of you come at me saying, oh, no, you didn't actually do miniature versions of this. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So why? <laughs> why, though? Why? Well, the angel said to. So, right? That's always the simple answer to that. So this is why I said, you know, if you wanted to put in... Um, about, you know, you know, just go ahead and invest up front in all this beeswax. That would be the way to do it. So there's, can't catch my little, my breath a little bit because I'm getting old. Um, so there are four of these, right? Four legs of the table, four miniature SDAs. And I, you know, I put in risers here. The angels said to go ahead and um, do, you know, the equivalent of that, except with, um, I think they wanted these to be six inches and uh you know just put them and then obviously enough so that you don't smush the um, disc underneath the wax disc but they wanted like i think square six inch um the equivalent of risers or protective what have you um something so that there's enough room for that you know 11 eighths of an inch there so it would probably even need to be about three inches roughly something like that and put it underneath and they, would to, they were to be made of the same thing as the great table, or the holy table, excuse me. So I will discuss this, though, at the end, because it is the most expensive, but just keep that in mind. So okay. I've shown these before. These are um, silk banners that you're supposed to make. And the reason I'm putting these here is just because of the silk. Uh, some of these you can... I actually wound up reusing some older silk that I had um, from my earlier days in, as a magician. I just repurposed it for this. So the way that uh, if, you, if you go into the D diaries and you look at them, it is kind of confusing. And there seems to be like some, a double inconsistency that you, that unless you like really get into it, you're like, oh, okay, so D was supposed to do this. And then he was corrected, but he never went back and corrected the diaries. And then he was given a different version of the table that had these banners up, you know, the, the equivalent of these banners up here. And he never went back and asked about those names. So all of this is to say, I'm pretty sure that these names and color associations are right. This is West for me. So um, suffice it to say, these seem, I just went with the 
corrected great table for these names. So the main uh, issue for this is again time, um, but it's really good to do. It's another it's another thing where you you get something of an angel high and angel buzz. But the main thing is some kind of banner. Um, you know, I know Scott Stenwick, he has, uh, dowel rods that would, that I, I considered that, um, but it just seemed better. Okay. A banner, I can just put that up high and you see this in like, you know, old timey, you know, medieval shows, um, where they'll just, it may just hang directly up from the ceiling. So I just use the same kind of push pins and cause I have drywall here. It's just fine. There, it doesn't, there's nothing wrong with it. It's totally doable. <laughs> So all told, uh, you got to spend the money on the silk. You got to, you know, if you had nothing, let's say, you would have to spend money on sewing materials, thread that matches the color, stuff like that. But it's not bad, right? You got red and green, and you have black and white, all that. Um, and then the off colors are the same thing. You just change which one is which. Now, for some of these, uh, let me see if I can show this really quickly. So for like these, you can see here, I do have a silk background but I did put uh, these silk letters on top of just a harder, more easy to sew surface, um, just because it's like sewing silk is kind of a pain. So it's it, so I, I these are technically silk banners. It's just silk lettering on top of you know a little bit hard. I forget which fabric it is, um, but a harder you know more you know, sewable, for lack of a better term, uh, background that then goes on top of uh, silk itself also. So the money there, push pins that you've already probably invested in if you've done the SDA already, the sigillum. Uh, but these are the four banners. And it's, you know, there's 12 in all, but it's that time and the effort to do that. Again, you get the angel high. It's a lot of fun. So this part here, um, again, somebody's going to, it's, it's pretty easy to like criticize of this or that. Um, one, and the, whether it's, the decision as to whether or not to use Enochian letters or English letters, that's definitely one of them, right? Like, okay, well, the angels said, but they also said always, well, transcribe it into um, Enochian letters whenever you can, or that was kind of like their main thing. I shouldn't, I'm not going to speak overly broadly about that. But at any rate, what you can see here is, um, first of all, you can see my reflection here and a lot of, a lot of glare, but the whole point is that these are ensigns, right? And these will go on top of the table here. I've put them like out of the uh, normal order just so you can see them. I mean, they're in the right order, but um, they're not arranged in a heptagonal pattern about the table. So what is this? Well, uh, you go ahead and, well, these are all made out of tin. They did ask for that. For those of you who are interested, you know, more advanced, this would be like the equivalent of chesed, or Hesed. Again, I learned more of a Kabbalistic form of, uh, or excuse me, a more hermetic form of Kabbalah. Uh, so, but you can already start to tell, okay, wait a minute, what's going on with this? So the associations, you know, why, why these materials? So let's pause here and talk about that. So when it comes to the SDA, it's wax. And I actually looked into this a little bit. And, and of course the round tablet, both and the ones underneath the table. Um, these are wax as in, um, kind of like a neutral in traditional Chinese medicine, at least from the research that I did. I'm not perfect on this, but, uh, you know, part of me, you know, the person who had sort of done a lot of self-study into, um, golden dawn type of stuff, part of me was like, well, you know, what are the correspondences and what do they associate with? So the wax is basically kind of neutral in terms of yin and yang energy, as far as, you know, again, I'm not an expert in this, but, um, so somebody else, feel free to correct me in the comments, but these are made out of tin, and tin has an association with Jupiter, and, uh, again, with, um, chesed, if you're going to make the planetary correspondence, uh, thing that we, uh, that people, you know, in the Golden Dawn tradition, more or less, that those are going to be the correspondences, so there are seven, Ignore this one here for a second. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And of course, the seven have to do with the seven planets. Now for this, so you have to buy your tin. You have to cut the tin. So you'll need a tool for that. Um, you know, hopefully you either have it, own it already, or can borrow it from a neighbor. So you you do that. 
I also bought um, an etching tool with a diamond tip and it, it's just, you know, immediately it's a, you know, electric. So I spared my, uh, this uh, middle tip of my middle finger here, which is numb. It's, you know, about 50 to 75% of sensation there. Um, it ne it's probably never coming back from all the work I've done on this stuff. But at any rate, um, so I went ahead and just etched these in and to look to, for a while, I went ahead, let me, let me try to get some ink in there, you know, with just like a regular ballpoint pen, you know, your mileage may vary, but at any rate, um, you, so you buy the tin, tin is relatively inexpensive. Uh, bear in mind, if you ever, you know, if your house burns down, this will probably melt. Okay. Probably not going to happen if you're into Enochian, I'll just say that much. If you're very careful and not, you know, and just stick with Enochian. Um, so yeah, the tin is relatively inexpensive. Buy the uh, electric etching tool and then go back over these. Again, it's, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you exactly how much that is. It might even be less expensive than the SDA, depending on what you already have on hand. Um, yeah, so those are the, uh, those are the ensigns of creation and they kind of are spread out according to the correspondences uh, that the angels laid okay, out. So the next part is the um, Enochian Laman. Yeah, this cat is going to be meowing at me all day. So this is the Enochian Laman. And as you can see here, there are, um, there are Enochian letters throughout. This is, uh, these are all based on the names of the kings and princes of the Heptarchy. Um, I got this, I, I couldn't even tell you where I got it, but because it was so long ago, but you can get stuff like this uh, online, uh, get it on Etsy. My recommendation is the uh, Seventh Gate shop. They got me a specialty ramen that I ordered for another uh, Enochian purpose, which you've seen if you've seen my previous video. Again, this is, you know, not inexpensive. Um, uh, this one is at least relatively small, so it'll go, this would be worn around the neck. I believe the angel said black silk, um, but again, this this all depends on your budget. You can still do this again. I, like I have an electronic version of this that you can just print out on um, my website, Enochian.today. It's part of that same file. I have it all in the same file. So if you're wondering where it is, just keep tabbing over, keep looking to the next tab. Um, this would cost, I, don't, I would say roughly maybe 150 bucks American as of right now. Um, it's not too bad if you want to if you want to buy it. Um, but yeah, the, the whole idea is that this, you're going to use this to reconcile yourself with the holy table. The holy table is the most expensive, so I'm going to get to that, um, at the end, but I also have a version of the holy table online that you can print out and just have that around, you know, and activate it the same way Lon talks about in his book. So the next part I want to talk about are the tablets related to the watchtower and, uh, these three, which are all kind of related. So... These uh, are basically wooden squares. Um, I requested the same wood that this holy table is made from. That's why the grain looks so similar. And so for this, um, six inches and, you know, a lot of paint, you know, and that's, you just paint it up. So um, red and green and then black, I think they, there was something, I want to say bilberry juice was the color association, but black is good enough. And then uh, white. And so these are the colors. So red is obviously, the red background here is fire. I put the green letters on top. White is associated with air in Enochian. Um, you'll see in uh, in Golden Dawn systems, it's, it's yellow, but I went with the original, you know, D color scheme. I, uh, and then, you know, the alternate colors uh, for these two tablets. So this is associated with fire, air, water, and earth. Here in, uh, in, uh, <laughs> cat's back. Hello, Daisy. Yes, we love you. She's like, why are you on the floor? Um, so these are the letters. So again, uh, I would, for this one, I'd recommend uh, Scott Stenwick's Mastering the Great Table. It's not that Lon doesn't get into this. It's just that he, Stenwick does a really good job getting into the layers of detail here. So these are associated with, again, the four elements, and there's a whole host of angels associated with this. Um, kings, seniors, uh, cherubs, and uh, quote-unquote lesser angels, um, uh, as well as uh, keiku demons, which I do not recommend getting into if you are a beginner. And I'll tell you, I'm, for, in terms of Enochian, I'm, like, I'm not like an expert, but I am relatively advanced. 
Um, and I, I still have not really seen a need or a use for that. So the rest of these, these are just, these are more like cosmetic a little bit. Um, but they do, this is intended to be something like the Great Table of Union. Probably somebody could rightfully argue that, no, oh, the order's wrong or whatever. And it's like, yeah, probably, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, so at any rate, uh, these are the, uh, these are the names, um, Xarpe, Coma, Nanta, and then Bitom. And these are just those same initial letters, you know, N, you know, B, etc. Um, and then for this one, I'm like, well, I have seven. What am I going to do? Well, how about I just make one, you know, uh, additional thing that has the, you know, the name of one or unity L and, but I'll combine, I'll make it out of all four of the colors. So the background is black, etc. Okay. So the next thing I wanted to, uh, bring to your attention, by the way, uh, I am fine showing the versions of this with, um, uh, you know, were, you know, my, my attempts that, you know, may not have always had, like, like you can see here, I got to Hagon and then I didn't have enough room. So I just scratched it out and put it there, um, at the bottom, Hagonel. But anyway, what are these? Well, these are seals. I went with, uh, Stenwick's, um, version of this. These are seals of the Heptarchy and the Heptarchical Angels. And this one actually is for the, what you can sort of think of as like a high king. Uh, this is high king Karmara and the associated prince uh, Hagonel. You can think of it as a high king or something like that. Some people say, well, it's an alternate version of the Venus uh, one uh, seal. I went ahead and made these out of silver. Um, I just felt that like silver was better for some reason. But as you can see here, we've got, you know, the ring on the outside, the special triangle in the middle, and then the thing associated with the sun. I know that I said Venus, but there, the Enochian order is kind of funny that Venus, like, leads into the sun, you know, it, it, and then the sun sort of leads into Mars and stuff like that. But at any rate, um, I made these out of silver. Again, you can just etch them in there uh, using an electric etcher, and uh, it wasn't too expensive, uh, but it was worth... It was worthwhile. Um, the silver is kind of, if you're going to do it in silver, I, I, you know, I don't know that um, we know exactly what materials you use. I use silver just because generally it's a good all-purpose thing, but I probably could have done it in tin. It would definitely would have been cheaper. So, you know, do what you're going to do. So now uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, great table. And the reason I've sort of saved that for last is it, it is the most expensive. It's There's just no getting around that. Um, so I went ahead and did the ensigns, even though they're pretty much associated with the grade table, just because you could print out a version of the grade table and then put the tin ensigns around them. Um, I'm, I really do want to try to think about, consider everybody's budget, but, um, you could do that. Uh, the red silk, it makes a little bit less sense, but we'll, eh, let's go ahead and talk about the red silk. So this red silk here is what I put at the bottom underneath it was kind of a pain. This was one of the last things I bought, actually. Um, as you can see here, it's very, you know, you can see why, you know, it's it's very angelic, you know, divine, just, you know, that nice feel of the silk, but that big flashing red, very, you know, it is something like uh, out of the Old Testament, right? So at any rate, you put this at the bottom, it's supposed to go underneath. Uh, it's supposed to be um, four feet, I think, in all, uh, four feet square. And so, you know, go, it extends a bit beyond the actual table itself like this. Of course, because I messed up this end showing you, um, not messed up, just, you know, have to like figure out how to get that out. But at any rate here, you can see the, it extends beyond, you know, so it's roughly four feet, maybe less, um, but it's, you know, four feet square. So four feet by four feet. So that's a lot of silk, right? <laughs> And I thought about sewing it up and making like a very whole kind of thing, but it's just as good, you know, flop it over. It's still making a square. It's just not, it's just cut in the middle, but clearly it all goes together. So that's what I did. I said two feet, give me, you know, you know, two orders of, you know, four feet for um, however long that is. So yeah, uh, not bad. Uh, but this obviously is associated with the great table. 
So let's talk about the table. Yeah, now. so this is the end, uh, talking about the great table here. So this is where a lot of stuff from the very beginning of the system, you know, it is, it is, it, it's kind of ironic, you know, the first shall be last. Well, it really should be the last. It was the first, one of the first things transmitted, but it's so expensive uh, to come up with wood and get it um, sent to your doorstep. Um, it's not cheap, especially if you're going for the right kind. So what kind of wood are we talking about for this big, great table here? Well, we're talking about um, basically uh, sweet wood is what the angels called it. And um, from people who know more about this than me, they've suggested this would be like a cedar of Lebanon kind of uh, wood. Um, unfortunately, that is now an endangered kind of wood, thanks to uh, people being people. So uh, what I did in consideration of that is I said, let me go ahead and get something pretty close to that. And so I looked up and I found, you know, trying to be trying to be environmentally conscious, I went ahead and got um, Deodar cedar, which is of the same genus. It's not going to be identical. And none of this is perfect. I mean, we're human beings living in a human world. I always try to like remind people of that. Like this, this isn't perfect, you know, but, um, a good cedar of Lebanon and the place I ordered it from, uh, they had already, it was already here in the U S uh, the Deodar cedar that is. So I went ahead and asked them, you know, to please, you know, sand it, you know, if you have the tools at home, it'll, you know, save you a buck and a half. Or if you have a neighbor who has tools and you can sort of, you know, talk with them about it, please. Could you help me out with this? Yeah, they'll probably do it if you're nice and polite, you know, or some kind of exchange, what have you. So, so the initial upfront cost is this. So this is um, three feet by three feet, the uh, surface is. And then for these, I'm pretty sure this was supposed to make a cube. So once I already had that, I said, let's make the, this part 33 inches, right? Because the thickness of this, for me at least, is three inches. And you can probably, you know, if three inches thick is too much, too expensive, that's fine. You know, um, try your best. That's the sort of thing here. And even when it came, like this part here came in cracked. But that's, that's you know, it's wood. <laughs> you know, you transport it a long ways after you've already cut and sanded it. It's going to have little flaws like that. But it works just fine. And when you do get close to it, you know, you can, especially when you first buy it, if you have like deodar cedar or whatever, you get... Um, a very nice, a very nice sweet odor. It's nice and subtle. As I like to, you know, joke sometimes, it's like the letter B in subtle. It's subtle. That's the dad humor for the day. Um, so at any rate, and as you can see here, I'm already trying to like rearrange it back the way it should be. Pretty sure this is the way it goes. But at any rate, um, yeah, so you buy the wood, then you are supposed to fit all these letters in it. So do the math. Uh, you have 20... One letter's here, then one at the corner. So this came out to be two and a quarter, two and a quarter, and then 21 times an inch and a half. And then you draw in your letters accordingly. And I went ahead, and of course all this is supposed to be in Enochian letters, but that's kind of like the big deal here. So all told, um, it, it was expensive. Like this, the table itself is by far the most expensive. Um, B, and it probably, probably cost as much as everything else put together and then some. Um, but it's, you know, it's worthwhile. It, obviously, it's sort of like the capstone. Can you, you know, save all this? And the why do I spend so much time lingering on this, this table, in per, the, the table in particular? Well, the thing is, is that this is where all of the heptarchical angels and kings, their names are on it in kind of a remixed and coded kind of uh, formation. And the whole idea is that the table is supposed to reconcile heaven and earth, right? And then you, the practitioner, are supposed to be reconciled with the holy table via this laman. And of course, you don't do anything, though, without the ring, okay? And then um, once you've sort of spiritually said, that's what I'm going to do, then you sort of continue to activate it by this SDA, by this round tablet. And I'm sure there are pieces you're missing. And of course, if you're gonna do uh, heptarchical planetary work, you bring in a seal, excuse me, I'll show this one. This is the seal of uh, Jupiter. 
So you bring in the seal, and then the whole idea is that you're supposed to be stepping on it. Uh, it's kind of an, a unique thing. You, you know, usually you, you lift something up and you say do this, but no, this one, put your foot on it, right? So, so at any rate, um, it's kind of interesting and unique, but it's it is almost as if you're saying, okay, I'm reconciled to the table, and the table's reconciled to heaven, and with me putting my foot in it, foot on something, I'm saying I want this heavenly thing to manifest in the earthly plane. Okay, that's sort of the logic that at least I have gleaned from it, um, and so, and various authors are going to disagree. I'm just a guy. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's it, though. I mean, you know, the tables, you know, I could get into, like, some of this stuff here. Like, why do I, why do you have that bracket? Well, the truth is, you know, my, my wife will come in and she'll lean on the table, even though I've told her not to. That's not a good idea. <laughs> she still does it. So I'm like, hmm, going to have to stabilize this. Um, some other stuff associated with the table I'll get, in, get into in just a Okay, second. so the last thing I wanted to mention is the uh, silk uh, that you put on top. So there's silk on top of silk, right? Um, what the angel said specifically about this is flashing uh, green and red. And Scott Stenwick had a uh, great discovery. There's a silk, silk called uh, Tabasco. And uh, it literally, like, if you sort of move over it, you can see the different colors. You know, if you look at it one way, it looks kind of green. And if you look at it another way, it looks kind of red. It's really nice. So uh, props to him for that. The other thing you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put on these tassels. Um, gold tassels. This is These are really cheap. Um, but again, I'm putting this at the end because it's associated with a great table. Like, why would you, why would you have all of this, you know, in advance of that? Um, yeah, I guess there would be a, a case to be made. Like if you have a printout, let's say of the, even a, like a big one, let's say a two by two or three by three, just sheet of paper with all the symbols on it in color, you could put this on top of that and it would distract you less. So that would be a good rationale for that. The main thing is you're, you're getting yourself, you know, you're, you're humbling yourself a little bit saying, okay, this is what the angel said. I'm going to get with that. I'm going to do that. And, um, the cat's right here. <laughs> she will be the star of these videos if she can help it. Um, the, but the main thing is, you know, to not distract you as much. Now, one thing I did want to address and I'll get up here, try not to be too lightheaded is, um, the matter of uh, scrying surface. And uh, for those of you who have, you know, worked with me or asked me any kind of questions beyond a couple about this, it's, uh, I, I actually don't recommend that <laughs> at all. Um, the, you can scry if you happen to, I mean, if you have this, the shoe stone from the British Museum, and I've heard, I've read tales about it flying around and doing all sorts of things that are amazing. Um, but if that's, if that's your thing, if you, if you get visions like that, uh, then I say go for it. Um, but for me, I work much more, much better without a surface. So if you, if you get a, a crystal ball or a, a showstone of whatever uh, variety, uh, or if you get an obsidian mirror, that's all up to you. Um, just know that, um, I mean, I, I know I bought a lot of stuff and that was a, a measured decision in terms of buying, making, that sort of thing. Um, but it's something, it's one that I made for myself. But if you don't need something, if it's, if it's not indicated, if the angels didn't say to buy it, then don't, you know, believe it or not, despite all this stuff, I reduce, reuse, recycle. I mean, I already mentioned that the silk fabrics up there, I reuse those um, from a previous life. I didn't need to go out and buy it. So I didn't. Um, so anyway, that's just my general philosophy. Now, as far as reducing, uh, this is, this is an area where you can. Um, and so what I did was I chose, I, I had bought an obsidian mirror. I tried using it. Okay. Results. But then I tried it with, uh, just a closed eye technique of just having a vision uh, after doing all the setup and all that, and it just comes like clockwork. Um, so that's, and that's it for me, but that's my own style. That's what works for me. But that's also what John D was told by the angels when he said he didn't really see stuff in the showstone, but he did see it when he would close his eyes. And they said that was better. 
at least that's, you know, according to uh, Jason Louv's book on the subject. So, uh, which I recommend in terms of knowing the history. Um, so in that case, if you don't need it, don't buy it. Um, so yeah, but that's about it. Uh, so, you know, like I said, the table is going to be the most expensive thing. I'll just let you know that right now. But in terms of printing something out, I mean, you can print out, I mean, I've shown this thing here. I decided not to buy a, um, let me just show it here really quickly like this. I decided not to buy another more wood to make that table, that zodiacal table surface that I could have, right? I could have gone ahead and said, oh, you know, you know, it needs to be complete. It needs to be this and that. And I'm like, just like, I got it. You know, I got the stuff. I know the energy. The angels did not say you should go do this. They were fine with it as it was. So that's what I wound up. Uh, that's what I wound up doing. And, you know, eventually you just kind of got it. You'll, you'll get this level of comfort and you'll, you'll, you'll have a knowing. So yeah, I think I've covered about everything. Um, if you want a wand, you can use a wand. I bought a wand. Um, I don't think you need it. Um, you can get a lot just by pointing your finger at stuff. But in terms of going through the process of attuning yourself to the Enochian energies, I do recommend, you know, as if starting out, just if you're just starting out, just do it in paper. Um, but as you go along, uh, really it's, it is a bit of a humbling process. It is a bit of a submission to the divine will. And, you know, I mean, I'm a Leo rising, you know, am I too proud for that? Eventually you learn not to be right. So, um, if you have any questions, uh, just leave them in the comments. Um, I know this was a lot, but this is kind of a good overview. If you haven't done this sort of thing before, where do I start? How, how do I do this? Those, the first few things that you get, you know, it's going to be, you know, each one of those, like I said, 50 bucks here, 60 bucks there, 70 bucks there. Um, maybe the tins are a little bit less expensive, but I didn't, or the ensigns, but made out of tin, they're a little bit less expensive. I don't know, but they're also more closely associated with the table. So you get the best, in my opinion, um, way to go about it. So that's it. I thought I had more to say, but I don't. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, leave them in the comments or contact me through my website, enochian.today or in uh, many, uh, one of the many fine ways to reach me. Thanks.